Hi everyone, I'm Erin Sawyer. I work for DLA Distribution in the VSM Transportation Office. And VSM is the vendor shipment module. Um, do you guys use it? Use it? Yeah? Okay. If you don't, or if you know somebody who doesn't and you're passing us along, they can go to our website and right up top click on new vendor application. Um, all our information are in the brochures that are laying on the table, so feel free to take one of those. It has our help desk phone number as well as the email address. So once you log into the system, Jen's going to go ahead and log in here. On the main page, any alerts that um, anything we need to tell you, any updates, stuff like that, we'll post right here to the main page. So you can see those when you go in to log in every day. And then once you log in, you can go either to um, FOB destination or FOB origin. This is just something we see. You guys won't see this. You'll go to FOB destination or FOB origin based off of your contract type. And um, so we're gonna run through an origin small parcel shipment today. Unfortunately, we can't show the freight process because there's behind the scene things that we do. Um, so a small parcel shipment is anything that is less than 150 pounds or less than 12 cube. So if it goes over either the weight of 150 pounds or 12 cube, then it will be a freight shipment. Um, so for VSM it's set up into three different areas. You have your search fields over here. You have your main processing area in the middle. And this is all your contracts as they feed into the system. They'll appear here and you can see your contract information. And then at the top is your menu bar. So Jen's just going to pick one of our shipments and we'll just show you how um, we process our small parcel. So she selects the shipment and then she'll scroll to the bottom and click submit. And then you'll just pick if it's a partial or a total. It shows your contract quantity. So if you want to ship only part of that today, you would select partial and change your quantity. And then to ship the total, you'll select total. And then you'll enter your weight and your dimensions. And then the vendor reference number, that's just a field that will appear on your MSL. You can choose to use that or not. So if you have an internal number that you want to appear on your MSL, you put that in there. And then you'll just click submit at the bottom. And it'll take you back to the origin screen and on the origin screen at the bottom will be a message and this one says the FOB origin shipment has been accepted and it gives you the shipment control number so then she can go up to the print screen and then to print again and she can find her shipment and hit print docs and it'll show that this gave the small parcel label as well as the MSL and then she has her labels that she can put on her package and send out so that's pretty much it for the small parcel process. It's quick, it's easy. Um, it's a pretty user-friendly system. Um, for the freight shipments, like I said, there's a little additional time frame involved in that. Um, so there's the MSL and the packing list is an option. Does that there does go, does small this parcel. Inter, does this interact with wider workflow? It does not. It's all separate. Yes, it is. So, yes. You said the limitations are 150 pounds and 12 cubic feet. Yes. So if you were to go back to that small parcel information and put dimensions in there, more than 12 cubic feet, it would, it would trigger it as a freight shipment. Adios? Yeah. So it would come over to us then for the freight processing behind the scenes. At that point, it would look like it would disappear on your screen. You would not find, you would not see it anywhere. But it actually, at that point, then comes to the VSM office for us to take our action to work it as a freight shipment meaning either an LTL or a truckload. And it'll give you the shipment control number at the bottom of the screen too, so you do have that. So if you have any questions, you can give us a call, so. When I'm waiting for a DCMA inspector to come out, uh, would you uh, run me through the process of uh, getting my labels so that I can delay the shipment and then have the DCMA inspector come? Yes, if DCMA needs to come out to inspect the product, we ask that you get that done beforehand. However, some DC, DCMA inspectors want to inspect those labels. So if you know that your DCMA inspector comes every Tuesday and you're doing an LTO or a truckload shipment, pick a date that will be right around that time frame that you will have your labels back in time and get them on the package, have the inspector come in because the truck will be showing up. When you process through VSM and you're processing an LTL or a truckload shipment, it will trigger that truck. So you'll get your paperwork one day and the carrier will be in the next day to pick up that shipment. So again, this is where we ask here on the screen when you put in your weight and your dimensions, and if you go down to your ship date, if you pick a future date, 
what will happen is that will trigger within VSM. You will still get your military shipping label and your CBL back within the time frame, so within 48 hours, 48 to 72 hours. And then from there, your truck will not show up then until after the date that you have selected here. So if you know your DCMA inspector is not coming out until next week, pick a date for next week, a ship date for next week, and this way you'll have everything that you will need before your inspector shows up. Let's say you project a shipment date of next week, and let's say the QAS calls in sick and doesn't show up that day and doesn't come out until the following year. Uh, and that truck shows up on the day that it was scheduled to arrive to pick up the shipment. Is there, is there difficulty in rescheduling that shipment? As, if you know that there's going to be a problem and you're not going to have that shipment ready for whatever reason, give us a call so that we can cancel that truck as soon as possible. If that truck shows up and we haven't canceled it, then there's charges associated with that. Okay. So as soon as you know, give us a call because we can typically stop them before. But okay. If I have more than one uh, shipment, small parcel or LTL, and I'd like to combine them, uh, there are different contracts that I want to combine them so they can ship on the same day. How can I do that in VSM? As long as they have the same priority, ship to DODAC and ultimate DODAC. And you can see those three columns there, the IPD, the ship to and the ultimate. As long as the information in those three columns are the same, you can select both and then click all packed in one at the bottom. And then it'll take you over and it'll ask you if you want to do the total or partial quantity on each of the requisitions. And then the weight and the dimensions for the total. So you're actually just packaging both of those. You package up each order separately and then you combine it into one package. Yeah, if you have items that are yeah, if you have items that are shipping to the same place and you want to put them in the same box or on the same pallet, mm -hmm. you can do that okay. by doing it all packed in one. You just have to make sure that your IPD, your ship to, and your ultimate columns are all the same. Do you prefer that? Is it saving? Uh, obviously, it has to be saving you money, does it not? To combine. Particularly on the small parcel. Yes. Is that is it, is, it is saving you money to do that? Yes. Okay. Typically, yes. Because you're paying one bill instead of paying two. Okay. So, yes. I'm sorry, you had a question? So, on the, on the partial shipments, I would assume that's only if the contract says you can ship partial. Yeah, I mean, Pretty much VSM is a tool that you can use to do different things, but if it requires one thing in your contract, don't go against your contract. Any other questions? One of the other things that we will show you is the 129 labels. So if you are, if you are requiring, if you do require 129, if you select your shipment and then you select item label and you hit submit, it will take you to this screen where you fill out your, the pertinent information that is required for that particular item. And once you, once you clicked everything and put everything in there, it asks you what size labels you want. You select the size labels you want. And when you hit submit, it brings up your labels. So it'll bring your item label and your interior label. So there should be now, was there, two mm, separate. What, were there any major changes between 129P and 129R since R is the label? There were some changes. I don't know specifically exactly what those changes are, but. Um, what we'll do is uh, we've just we've gone through and reviewed a lot of that stuff. So what we're going to do is we'll put that on our website. Okay. Not to the website yeah. that I posted. Um, rather than just track too much here, but we'll put that out there so we can see what the no, no worthy change is. We'll walk by the RFP. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, again, I try to ask perfect questions. And, and there were some changes, and I will tell you, um, VSM right now is programmed for the 129P. Okay. Um, the, the 129R changes are coming. So we, we do have the, they will be in VSM shortly. Just to be clear, so on the labeling piece, you're only talking about the outside packages to the box not get down, not granular enough to get down to the QOP, right? Well, you're going to have your item label and your interior label on here. The exterior label, I believe, will be provided later That's on when you get your MSL. That's when you go to your print. 
and when you select print there is a container ID label and what that what that entails is if you go into the maintenance and you go to update your vendor profile there is a tab right down in here that tells you the different things that you can your default default printing forms that you can get so as long as your container label is checked you will get your container label the same time that you get your MSL now, again, we want to thank you because marking is one of the biggest problems that we and DOA have. And so the hard work of their systems folks and the ladies, um, we wanted, again, to provide you more tools to succeed because, again, your success is our success. So, again, we appreciate this. Is, so, I'm, I'm sorry to <laughs> keep drilling down. So the, at, the, at the item level, say you're delivering 5,000 pieces of a, a widget and the QOP is one, that granularity label-wise is not on this system. That's something that we have to separate. No, I believe, I believe it is there. That's the item label. Right, and that is your item label. So you, each one of them, so if your contract called for 5,000, would get 5,000 labels and that's the same spot so w with this one here if I select this one and I do my item label and I hit submit you're you're pretty much telling it how many labels you want so if you're going to ship all 5,000 at one time you're going to change that to 5,000 it won't let you because it's only a oh. quantity of 100 so oh, that's okay. why it defaulted to 100 there so then you would you would get all 5,000 labels on there now it again it is a PDF so as long as you're able to do the PDF or if you can set it to like an Avery type label, you should be able to, okay, you do your pick and, you know, your stick it on the box. If not, it's a PDF. You could print it out. You could cut it out. I'm sure you don't want to do that for 5,000 labels, but you could cut it out and then tape it on or, or whatever mess needs, you know, whatever you would need to get that on there. As far as the pickups go, um, for if it's a freight shipment, if it's truckload or less than truckload, um, VSM is, is arranging for that pickup. If it's small parcel, you're going to get your small parcel label, um, and when you put that on your your package, if you have a regularly scheduled pickup, you just put it in you know that pile and, and, and it's ready to go. If you don't, then you know, or or if it's a carrier you, you don't normally use, you're going to have to reach out to them and and let them know, hey, there's a box here that you know we need you to pick up. Um, for the DLA shipments, there, you know, that 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 on-site pickup um, charge doesn't apply just for the DLA shipments. Um, now, if you're combining, you know, your other other business pickups for that, then you may you're, you're probably going to see a charge for those pick up those uh, those shipments. But for the DLA box, you're not getting charged for that pickup. Um, but yeah, yeah, we, that label doesn't tell FedEx or UPS or DHL, hey, by the way, there's a package sitting at this location. You need to send a truck and get it. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate that. And one of the things that is changing, and, and, it, and it will be coming in the near future, is for FedEx. So once if you do receive a label and it does say FedEx, you are also then at that point, you're going to be able to schedule your pickup with FedEx within VSM. Yes, you are. You, you should be. If you're doing small parcel, you're probably getting FedEx also. So, but a future requirement that will that is coming and it's coming soon in VSM is if you do get a um, a FedEx one, it will give you the option to pick the date that you want it picked up, and then that will send that transaction to FedEx, where then you don't have to call FedEx to schedule it. So, yeah, if, if there are any, if you already have them coming in every day or you know, once a week or whatever, you know, you put our package in, in that pile and they'll pick it up. Um, but if it's, again, if, if, if they don't know, if they're not coming to your locations, then you know, you're either going to call them or once this fix is, is done, you can go ahead and schedule that uh, through, through the system. And with that, I'll just bring up one other point, the little exclamation point up here. This is now a notifications page that we have put within VSM that does give you some any type of notices that we have out for VSM. So please be, for, be sure to, to click on that.
from time to time just to see if there are any, are any new notifications that are out there. Again, it opens up a new page for you. So once you're done with that, you can just close that and it'll take you right back into your BSM page. Yeah. Oh, did you, by the, the way, I did have to step out for a moment. Did you cover the part about uh, the different addresses being different cage codes? You mean as far as setting up ship from location? Yes. Um, Does anybody in here use a packaging house? You use a packaging house. Do you currently use VSM? Yes. Does your packaging house own VSM? May I use you as an example? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay. Cage code. Our corporate or our manufacturing? I guess. Which one? Which one did? Which one gets awarded the contracts? Seven six three six four. Is it Bentley? Is, it Bentley? is Bentley your packaging? So yes, they are set up. So what, just to give everyone an example, so what that is, is your address is, are you in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? That's Bentley. I know. We're in the upper So you're, but this is, this is where Bentley is? Yes. Right. So this would be Bentley. So what would happen then is if you had a freight shipment, we want to make sure that the truck is arriving at the correct facility not showing up at your facility who doesn't have the freight so we we have the capability within VSM to add your packaging house under your cage code so they're able to see your contracts so if they're working your contracts for you they don't they just work it ship it and it's out the door we do so do some um, uh, destination inspection and acceptance at our manufacturing facility so we do have a uh, person that, that accesses VSM mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you, you want a, I guess, an account uh, or a, a location for each, each place that you will It's have an address for yes. them to pick up because it's a, making it a ship from the rack. So right. The only draw, drawback to that is, is you're correct in that that packaging house has access to all your contracts. They know exactly what you're selling it for. That's the, that's the one drawback to that. The one thing I can say with that is whoever depending on who is the point of contact within that facility at that site so if it's your packaging house you you might want to maintain control of that site so you can do everything within the site and then send it to your packaging house for them to ship and then this way they don't see all that information and I think that's correct we, you know, we had a shipment with Northrop that we were doing uh, that you know they put us in there and we were actually able to see these contracts that Maybe we should or shouldn't have been seen, but right. we, did, we were able to see those. It was kind of a little bit different than what normal was. Right. Because we, us being transporters, we're not sure. So if you at some point have um, or fire that packaging house for one reason or another, right. you don't want them to have access to your right. system. So we do try to say it's best if the main company holds control of that contract or control of that site. And then this way you can give access to who you <laughs> whom you feel you needs access, or you can also take it away. So. And everything comes in an Adobe file, so it's very easy to save it and email it to sure. the packaging house. Jen, do you want to talk about the hours of operation? Sure. So again, within your vendor shipment module, under your maintenance page, this is where your hours of operation are. And this is where we ask that people put in their hours of operation. And these are your receipt, your, um, your pickup hours, really, on the times that you want a truck to show up. So it's, it's really important that that be updated and, and kept. Also, if you know, if you, there's any particular holidays that you're going to be closed, we ask that you please also put that in. Um, good Friday was a, was a good, is a good example. A lot of people did not put in that they were closed on Good Friday and a lot of trucks showed up on Good Friday where there was nobody there. So we just ask that you please try to keep your hours of operation updated along with your holidays. Yeah, if you, you, I mean, if you open up, up at 8 but you don't really want to start loading trucks at 8 and you want to wait till 9, then you know, with 9 o'clock in your hour, you just started your operation.
there anything else? We appreciate you coming. Thank you very much.